Welcome to a broadcast of the recent Lorain County Commissioner's General Meeting. Unless otherwise announced, meetings are held Wednesday morning at 9.30 at the Administration Building, 226 Middle Avenue, 4th Floor, Downtown Elyria. These are public meetings and you are invited to attend. Agendas are posted prior to the meeting at www.lorraincounty.us. Click on Departments to see the Commissioner's page, then click on View Agenda. Good morning, everyone. If you'll please rise for the uh, Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands. One nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Well, good morning, everyone. This is the Lorraine County Board of Commissioners meeting for Wednesday, March 20th, 2019. And our inspirational word for the day, whenever we have the opportunity, we should do good to everyone. And we have our dog this morning. Good morning, this is um, number 10. She's a female. Um, she's available today. We have 20 other dogs in the kennel. She's a, a pit mix, bully breed. A uh, little nervous, but she'll, she'll, be, she'll warm up. Thank you. <laughs> Checking everybody out. Don't you want me to stay? Checking everybody nice. out. I'm done. That's right. <laughs> So everybody's aware, I think, is there a tornado drill that's going to yes, take place at 10 to 10? So if we hear any buzzers or anything going off, uh, it's, a, it's just a drill. All right, it's a drill. Okay. Madam Clerk. Under resolutions number one, investments. So move. Second. Discussion. Mr. Lundy. Aye. Ms. Kowski. Aye. Ms. Sweden. Aye. Appropriations. So move. Second. Discussion. Mr. Lundy. Aye. Ms. Kowski. Aye. Ms. Sweden. Aye. Transfers. So move. Second. Discussion. Mr. Lundy. Aye. Ms. Kowski. Aye. Ms. Sweden. Aye. New advances, new repayments, requisitions. So move. Second. Discussion. Mr. Lundy. Aye. Ms. Kowski. Aye. Ms. Sweden. Aye. Travel. So move. Second. Discussion. Mr. Lundy. Aye. Ms. Kowski. Aye. Ms. Sweden. Aye. Bills. So move. Second. Discussion. Mr. Lundy. Aye. Ms. Kowski. Aye. Ms. Sweden. Aye. Authorize various personnel actions as indicated on the summary sheet for those within jurisdiction of county commissioners. County Administrator Jim Cordes, good morning. Good morning, Commissioner. It's good to see you feeling better after yes, yesterday. We're getting there. The, the, uh, I do have a number of personnel issues I wish to discuss with the board, um, more specifically potential hires at Job and Family Services, the Crime Lab, and, and the Commissioner's Department <coughs> itself. Also want to brief you uh, on the uh, ongoing labor negotiations with some of our other uh, appointing authorities, uh, clerk of courts, recorder's office, so forth. Ongoing uh, negotiation with United Steelworkers of America has been, <clears throat> it's going well. I just want to brief you on that as you are the uh, signatory authority on any of those contracts. And also one pending legal matter and one pending sale of real estate. All of those subjects are allowable under the Sunshine Act for executive session discussion. So I'd ask at the conclusion of our regular board meeting, we go into executive session and we talk about those matters that I've explained. Thank you. Approve and waive the reading in the minutes of March 6th and 13th. So move. Second. Discussion. Mr. Lundy. Aye. Ms. Kowski. Aye. Ms. Sweden. Aye. Issuance of not to exceed 3680000 sanitary sewer improvements, Emerald Sewer Project, bond anticipation note, series 2009B, this is for the purpose of paying costs to construct and acquiring sanitary sewer system improvements for the <coughs> Emerald Sewer Project together with all necessary appurtenances thereto. So move. Second. Discussion. Hop road. 
No, it's just, I have no idea Yeah, it's, well, I need to talk about both of these in conjunction. Okay. Uh, we can talk about the specific projects, um, and then I, I, need to, I need to also increase these amounts because I want to do some more borrowing for something else that I'll talk to you real briefly about then later on, more in depth. Uh, this is the M Rewards. If you picked up the paper this morning, you saw that Columbia Township's being sued again by Riverside, which is north of this up on the border with uh, Olmsted Falls. Uh, it was a little surprising. I talked to council this morning because we thought that matter had been resolved, and it has all been to, also been through the planning uh, commission. But uh, things change. Uh, that that won't require as much work with the sewer because eventually that'll be tied into the Redford Road sewer via the, the big pumping station that we put up north there. Uh, but this is the uh, the Emberwoods Golf Course and also a parcel just south of the south. It's south of uh, Redford Farms, right? Redford Farms subdivision. Um, it's all initial stage planning, but we we look to be doing a pretty big tiff out there. Our objective is to bring the sewer all the way down over to the uh, Emerald Woods and then down Boone Road all the way to 82. There's no sewers down there on Route 82. Mm -hmm. uh, controlled development is, is key. Good land use management is key. Planning is key. Uh, but to try to hold back this wave of development that's happening is, is going to be very, very difficult. So you have to manage it. You can't, you can't limit it. You can't, you can't say it's not going to happen. It's coming. Um, so we're getting ready to start the engineering on that sewer. We have some initial <coughs> engineering specs. Uh, I don't know when we'll need to be committed to these funds, but you know, clearly we have $5 million of geo funding that we either need to pay back or, uh, and we have the $5 million. This is, we didn't use it for the other project, um, and borrow later or, or maintain that geo position. As I've talked to you about before, there's not a lot of geo left, even with the increased capacity of the new valuation uh, in Lorain County. Uh, so we have these projects going forward. Uh, the other piece, I'll talk about them both at the same time. I think it's going to be more for the parking deck uh, after I think much anxiety and frustration by each commissioner. Uh, it, was, it was thought that we should get another five or six years out of the garage, <clears throat> maybe seven or longer. Uh, but we must work on a long-term solution. Uh, to the planning of, of the demise of, of that, of that uh, parking deck. But right now, we simply do not have the resources um, all cobbled together to replace that garage. I believe I gave you an expectation of about $24,000 or $25,000 a parking spot times 600. And the, the, uh, the ability to, to pay for that right now simply is not there, but also the ability to duplicate 600 parking spots on surface parking is very limited in the downtown area also. The current parking deck holds about 425 vehicles. I've indicated to you with growth in the county and the way our parking situation is now, we need 600 plus spots if you're going to properly plan for the garage. You don't want it to be full the day it's open. Mm -hmm. um, realistically, we probably need closer to 700 so we can go back to a mixed use facility. So 700 times 25,000 a spot. Uh, so there's, some, there's a lot of challenges there. And those challenges are going to have to be solved in, in, in the years to come. But presently, uh, we, we need to deal with what the reality of that we don't have the whole part of the upper deck. We're going to be closing part of the second deck and to do this work. Uh, but I, I don't want to just complete this work and then five years from now I'll be back in the same fly trap that we're in today. The third thing is... Uh, I w would ask that we, we, I don't know how to change resolution, increase this borrowing, uh, maybe another million dollars. I, I have been in uh, consultation with our, our folks at the jail with regard to the video security system. I think, Commissioner, you've just recently been out there. Last year, we put a lot of money into the, to the locks to redo all those locks. That was about $500,000. Um, and the locks weren't working. <laughs> You know, people could not safely be moved around, and I will say that, that while I haven't been out there in some time to look at it, I've gotten the reports and I've seen um, uh, depictions and videos of how poor the surveillance system is out there and what they're having to deal with. It's a very, in my mind, it's a very unsafe environment, and it needs correcting, and to correct that, we need about $700,000. Um, that's an initial look. I, I, I uh, will have more for you uh, soon on that. 
I just know we're going to this borrowing now. I really don't want to go back to the markets again in, in three or four or five weeks. It just agitates the rating agencies. Why didn't you know it four weeks ago? It doesn't make us look like we're planning properly. But I only got that number yesterday uh, from the jail. I will tell you I was a little stunned, a little taken back. I don't think there's any proof for it. I know they've been working real hard. I respect the work they do out there. Uh, but we don't actually have to move forward on the project. I just want to make sure the availability of funds is there should you decide you want to do that. And the cost of issuance just won't change much with another million dollars of capital notes. Recognize these are not, pardon me, I said notes. Right, notes. These are not bonds. They're notes. They're anticipation notes for capital projects. So the carrying cost is, is kind of low on those right now compared to long-term financing. And uh, Budget Director, I don't know if she wants to add anything. Um, to that. There's a little surprise for you this morning. I haven't talked to you on that either. Mm -hmm. uh, the, the, uh, so I don't know how to modify this resolution. I would, if it's okay, I mean, approve these two separate, then number 12 would be issuance of not to exceed $1 million for the jail. Blah, well, I blah, just blah, want, blah. And then right. the fourth would be consolidate three bond anticipation notes. Good. The, it's it's new money. I, I know I, I gave you a number less than a million, but better we get a little more and the carrying cost is insignificant, then we come up short. Yeah. And then we'll talk more about the project in the next couple of weeks and decide which way you want to go, recognizing is, um, that there's, there's a long way from here to there. But what we're looking at is, is national state pricing that we can piggyback on so we don't have to do a long and lengthy spec out and, and, and seal bid process because we're allowed to use um, those things that have been on state term or national term. So that'll shorten the, the overall time frame to get this accomplished if you want to go forward. And I did see that system. It's grainy. It's, uh, it malfunctions a lot of the zones. It, it needs work. Mm -hmm. And we were shocked when we heard it was going to be half a million dollars for the locks right. in the facility. And, uh, and I, I saw that security system many years ago, and it was pretty bad then. And uh, so it's only worse today. But this is just another reality of what we deal with in government. I know there are some people who say government, you know, you don't need any more money and you know, operate with what you got. And, uh, but the reality is that uh, we get absolutely no credit when something finally wears out after 15, 20 years, you know, we try to stretch these things as long as possible. And I mean, look at this with the garage. That's probably the, one of the most frustrating things that Jim knows I don't like to deal with. This garage is so frustrating. But, um, but the reality is that, you know, we, we, we get no credit when we uh, stretch things out. And probably sometimes, shame on us for stretching it out so long. Maybe we should look at. Uh, uh, doing some of the improvements sooner than later because eventually you got to pay and when you do have to pay you generally end up paying more but but the reality is um, things have to be fixed just like you know your roof only lasts so long and other things with your home need to be replaced after a period of time so we try to manage things the best we can but these are your buildings your facilities uh, your correctional facility and uh, you know, I always say one of the toughest jobs in public service is being a corrections officer. And uh, I, I can't stress enough the importance of making sure that it's a safe environment for those corrections officers and, uh, you know, safe environment for, for inmates who are in there who aren't stirring up any trouble, but maybe somebody else is. So um, it's important that these things get done. But, boy, when the bill comes due, it is just so expensive. Um, this is another example of that. It's... Uh Remembering just for those folks that are, are not that well versed as we are, we're required to provide that jail. We are required to house inmates. It's not optional. It's not discretionary. Uh, if they're ordered into confinement, we're required to confine them and or pay to have them confined someplace else. So we don't, you don't have many options here. And 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 the other elephant, you know, attempting to hide under the carpet is eventually we have to have the conversation about the jail and how old it is and what we can do there. We've been working with, with those folks. Um, and, you know, we just replaced a whole bunch of shallow walls that you could have walked through out there from the, de you know, the, the deterioration of the, uh, the concrete and, and other things. Uh, the last major renovation on the jail occurred in the mid-90s. Uh, that was you know, how many, we can do the math here. It, and, and, and that increased the capacity and renovated older portions of that jail from the original build. 
uh, but there's going to need to be a longer term solution. And our plight is not unique. The state yeah. of local jails in Ohio in general, except outside those huge communities um, with a bigger tax base, is, is, is massive. And so <clears throat> the other concern is I still haven't gotten the answer to the TCAP funding uh, issue, uh, whether the state's going to extend that TCAP. A lot of people don't remember. It wasn't too long ago the state stopped taking our F5s. So we either have to divert them or house them ourselves. Right. And we did receive funding to do that uh, for a while, but I, I really haven't uh, been clued in on whether they're going to continue that TCAP funding past this, the end of this uh, state fiscal year. And we may be huffing on our own here with the ability to pay for that diversion and or uh, house those people that uh, are uh, adjudicated on, on F5s. Uh, there's, you know, there's a couple scenarios I see a lot of a lot less ability to plead down and maybe give somebody an opportunity at, at, at a chance to, to do better without having a higher sentencing requirement, uh, simply because you're gonna have to deal with a category where local resources are gonna be scarce to handle that type of, of uh, uh, issue. So that's coming too. Everything's always coming to you guys. Mm -hmm. I'm always the bearer of, of good news, I love it. We've already d done a lot of diversion through the recovery court and Judge Walther's uh, Veterans Treatment Court, so you know, this TCAP, it, it's good, but we've already done a lot of that already, so. True enough, but we, we, don't, we lack the option with the F5s, though, and, and the money we receive for some of this diversion, and, and, the, and a, some, a good part of the drug cost is being paid for with, with TCAP funds. So we have to find new resources and as we move forward and or figure out how to redirect some of the resources we have now. I'm hopeful. The, there's been a, you know, the new administration in Columbus seems to have a more open mind with addiction services and incarceration, and so there may be some initiatives that come out of that that'll help us here. Uh, but we We're have to wait. Also talking about matching dollars to rebuild jails in Ohio. They realize that the, all right. the infrastructure is getting older, so um, they're matching. I think they're going to match money on, on rebuilding. Jails. And that's something we've we've talked about. We need to be prepared for that. So. Last look a few years ago that we needed about 60 to 65 million dollars for, for a new jail. And uh, it's a manpower issue the way our jail is chopped up too. So if you have a, a new jail and there's also less manpower needed for the way efficiencies. efficiencies. There is efficiencies in the pod structure and the way they, they house and separate that that uh, uh, you know a new new thinking and technology has improved. But if you build a new jail, you you're going to build an increased capacity mm -hmm. to the future. So mm -hmm. That, that while you get more efficiency, you may not see a reduction in staffing. In fact, there may be a slight increase in the staffing. So, um, you know, I, the last thing you want to be is in the situation Cuyahoga County was 25 years ago where they, they built this really, really nice new jail and then they couldn't open it because they couldn't afford to operate it. Right. Uh, so uh, you know, I don't think we need a lesson to learn and I don't think that would have happened to us, but, but it did happen to them. And, and you know, you gotta be keenly aware that brick and mortar is one thing, operation costs are another thing. So we, a lot of things coming up in the future that need to be, need to be taken into consideration to advance the community. We're not unique and it's not because of, you know, the, the board hasn't done its job here. Communities are aging in their infrastructure and there's, there's continued need and we're growing. And, and we're going to continue to grow. All you got to do is look at all the housing starts over in Columbia Township, North Ridgeville, Avon. You know, it, we're, the, our community is going to continue to expand. And with that expansion, we're going to overrun the, the services that were put into place 25, 30, 40 years ago. Yeah. Our main job is the budget, but we're also in charge of civility and keeping <laughs> civil. Really, I mean, the whole justice system is what we do here. So. Well, and what I was able to witness is during t peak times of incarceration when the numbers are up, um, they have their, their fiberglass boats, they call them, mm -hmm. that are just edge to edge filled with, <coughs> with um, individuals and no, ho no bedding, no, um, no space, and that is a climate for disaster yeah. as well when you have that overpopulation. Sure. So they, they do the best they can with the space they have. So, so let's, we doing this? well, we're going to make a roll call on the first one. Okay. Right. 10. All right. right. So, Mr. Lundy. Aye. Ms. Kowski. Aye. Ms. Sweda. Aye. 
And then the next one is issuance of not to exceed 1580000 parking debt construction bond anticipation notes series 2019B for purpose of paying cost of constructing and acquiring improvements for a park deck and an administration building together with all necessary appetences there thereto. So move. Second. Discussion. Mr. Wright. Aye. Ms. Kowski. Aye. Mrs. Sweeta. Aye. And then the next one I'm assuming is going to be say pretty much the same issue thing is issuance of not to exceed one million for the jail and blah 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 blah. But we'll figure that out with the bond people. <laughs> I want to see how you write that in a minute. Yeah, purpose yeah. of acquiring improvements for said jail and appetences there too of I take that. it any way it comes. Okay. All right. <laughs> Yeah, we'll get it after this. But. Is, that, is that proper wording, Council? Blah, blah, blah. Uh, <laughs> 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 la, la, la. Actually, yeah. it does. <laughs> Would you like to make the motion, Commissioner? Yes, I'll make that motion. I'll second. Any further discussion? Mr. Lundy? Aye. Ms. Kowski? Aye. Ms. Sweetup? Aye. And then we'll consolidate the three bond anticipation notes above and establish terms as such consolidated issues. Okay, so move. Second. Discussion. Mr. Lundy. Aye. Ms. Kowski. Aye. Ms. Sweda. Aye. All right. Under sanitary, enter an addendum number one sanitary sewer service agreement with Lower Cold Hawk Road. So move. Second. Discussion. Mr. Lundy. Aye. Ms. Kowski. Did you want to talk about that change at all? Yes, please. Uh, under our agreement with LOCO, uh, there hasn't been a, a huge amount of homes requesting to uh, move from. Um, the uh, our management area to the Walco. Several years ago, <clears throat> they put the sewer down um, Hawk Road, which most people that travel there probably don't know, divides uh, Eaton Township and, and Columbia Township. Pretty much the demarcation line is right in the middle of the road. And that makes for ease of services, so they usually do pick roads if they can to where they, they put boundaries. The, uh, the people on the West side of Hawk Road is serviced by Walco with a force main low pressure system, and the people on the west side were in a different service area, did not have access to that sewer, nor did Columbia Township, uh, nor was Columbia Township in the Walco service area. So, a few a few people indicated they may have wanted service. So after much back and forth, we we did work out an arrangement with Walco. They could service those people on an individual basis. And each time we would make a facilities change and incorporate that parcel into the Walco service area with the Avon Lake uh, as a sub designee because the service is actually coming out of Avon Lake. Mm -hmm. The uh, Unfortunately, when we wrote the contract, the, the costs were, were a lot different. And it's, it's costing more to get the laterals under the road on Hawk Road and do the borings. We want borings rather than open cuts. If you can bore, it's, it's certainly a lot better for the road rather than all those open cuts. You. I was I was like driving I, mean, I was driving down Bagley Road the other night and they just put that road in and now it's got like 12 different open cuts across it and the road's brand new. Okay. And like, you know, okay, look, maybe you didn't know about some of this work when the road went in, but bore under the road. Don't cut through a brand new road. It just deteriorates it that much more rapidly. So they are doing borings out there uh, and the road is not in that that greater shape in certain sections, but other areas they've just repaved in the last few years. But it's costing Walco more, in a nutshell, than what we had agreed to in the contract. And, th and that cost should not be burdened onto them. Our, our arrangement was that if the homeowners wanted that and solicited that, especially for new builds, that was their cost to get those laterals underneath there. So we just modified to allow them to recover their cost. They're not making any money on it, they're just recovering their cost, and I think it's a fair arrangement. Yeah. Aye. Ms. Kowski. Aye. Ms. Sweden. Aye. Workforce Development authorize MOU between the Workforce Development Board and WDA to serve as the Ohio Means Job Comprehensive Career Center Operator retroactive to March 1st, 2019 through June 30th, 2020 and has option to renew annually for up to three additional <coughs> one-year periods. So move. Second. Discussion. Um, Mr. Cortez, would you like to talk about the difference between our workforce development and what the City of Valeria is doing with their Valeria Works? I don't know if there is much difference. Uh, you know, I, 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 I guess, you know, I recognize the city feels they, they may need something, but we provide the same services over at Ohio Means Jobs, and we use federal funds to do so. Um, we do uh, try to align people with jobs. We, we, you were there uh, last week. I think you were amazed at how large the place was that oh, we've yeah. been expanding. 
veterans has moved out. We, we've got a facility for them. They have their own home out on Abbey Road after you know, 40 years of being stuck in half cubies in, in a corner somewhere. So we've, we've taken over that space. And you saw how large the job and family service space was that they retreated from some years ago that we moved uh, workforce development and about our 12 partners <laughs> out there under the MOU into. Uh, and of course, the, all the labs, workshops, training rooms that are ongoing. But we do work with employers. We, we are in the ACT you know, Keys program to evaluate jobs and match those uh, with people that, that have qualified for a gold key or a platinum key in skill levels. It doesn't denote whether you're better if you get a gold or a platinum. It just says you have a, this skill set over here and this mm -hmm. skill set over there. Once those things are matched with job descriptions and evaluated, we usually can provide a group of individuals for the company to look at for possible employment that, that possess the basic skills that they could be successful in that role with the company. But the company has to get involved with Ohio they do. Means Jobs. So they I, do. I wonder if these companies that O'Leary is working with, are they also part of Ohio Means Jobs? Or they they, they could be commissioner. I, I don't know specifically. Uh, you know, I never made it my purpose to interfere with what other people thought they needed to do. Uh, I wish we were doing it all through workforce development. That strengthens Ohio Means Jobs over on, uh, on um, 254. 254. Uh, but, but, but some people tend to want to do it on their own. Uh, we've seen this before with other organizations. We're still here, they're gone. And we're going to be here after these things come and go too. The difference is we get outside funds. We bring back federal funds mm -hmm. to the community, and those funds can be used for OJTs. They can be used for, for training. They can be used to go to college if you're dislocated. They can be used uh, for if you're under 24 for work assignments. We routinely do a lot of work assignments. I will tell you, I just signed for two uh, youth work assignments, and we say youth. Let's recognizing in some aspects, you can be up to 26 years old under the youth program. Most most of you, though, most of the funds cut off about 24. You know, the clerk of courts over Lorraine's all over me for, you know, work experience people that while they do new programming over there. Mm -hmm. Because why? Because Mr. Kalo is, knows the program. He knows he can get people over there to help out with the, the chores and duties of change that he wants, and it doesn't cost them any money, and it gives these people a workplace to be in. The key is getting them there, and then the, the collaboration, since we pay them with federal funds, we pay for their, them to be there, is that they, they teach soft skills to these folks when they're there. They teach them how to be, get there on time, how to, how to properly uh, uh, prepare themselves for a future in a, in, a, in a work environment, a workplace. And, and a lot of times that works out good, especially since we're dealing with a lot of at-risk uh, populations. Uh, so is it, is it different? Not really. If maybe what they're doing a little bit more concentrated, possibly, uh, but but we're able to provide this, the same services. And you and I were out and we talked about a little bit about the workforce development and careers and over in um, Avon, Avon with Avon. Avon Lake and Avon and Sheffield Village and the Avon Mayor and some of those staffers. With regards to they have job opportunities there, a lot of them are entry level uh, uh, or a little bit slightly higher than entry level, and they, they cannot get workers to those job sites, especially with uh, the, the new retail that's opening up along the uh, Route 2 corridor. And we had uh, considerable conversations of how to get those employers um, properly hooked with, with, with a ready workforce that may be able to fill those jobs. We all know what one of the big barriers are, and that's yeah, transportation. Mm -hmm. we, we know that's there, but, but some of the other barriers we could, we could certainly work on and provide them a pool of what we consider candidates that will be able to, to do the job and do it well if they go to work and stay at work and get transportation and so forth. Um, so that's a bit of a long answer to a short question. Uh, but, but I'm not going to find fault with anybody that's trying to do something to improve their workforce, but I just wish we were doing it together. Mm -hmm. um, speaking of transportation, I was talking to Tony Gallo yesterday at our event, and he was talking about GoHio uh, through NOACA, G in front of Ohio, uh, for ride-sharing mm -hmm. opportunities. So I guess Grace Gallucci is going to be at the elected officials uh, event that we'll be at, and she's going to... Her and her staff are going to talk about that, so I'm we, pretty interested in hearing about we, that. We've had considerable conversation, and one of the things we brought up with, with the meeting that we were at uh, was that, that while we may not have transit service into the eastern side of Lorain County, we certainly need to look for park and ride opportunities, and we need to look for 
uh, van sharing, uh, uh, van pooling, and, and uh, ride sharing. Uh, there's one really small lot uh, uh, that's on the... 83? Yeah, that connector. I just don't understand how that all works over there. But mm -hmm. they put... And, and the mayor indicated to me strongly that's going to go away. It's just... it's it's It was a... Thank you for thinking of having to pull off there, but it just didn't fit in that small area. But but we need a, a larger look at where people can go to the eastern side of the county, park in a secure facility, and then finish their commute as a group, uh, going going further uh, east for employment opportunity. Over 50% of the Lorain County residents leave Lorain County for employment opportunities on a daily basis. Uh, we we while we we can't. Right, presently transport a lot of those folks we can certainly make it a little easier for them to work together to transport each other mm -hmm. and and there is money for those things to, uh, that that we we can accomplish we just have to do our work and do the justification about five years eight years ago we looked in earnest for a, for a piece of land along route two in the eastern suburbs to put in just that facility when there was a boatload of money available during stimulus funds and so forth and because the land has become so valued, we couldn't find anything that was in, a, in an area where it wasn't going to be more <coughs> congestion. Nobody wanted to release the land for that in a reasonable uh, dollar amount to put that in. But that doesn't mean the problem went away. Right. The problem still exists. All you have to do is go to the park and ride um, in Westlake uh, on the service road there and see how packed that is and how many Lorain County vehicles are there uh, on uh, 117 or down... Um, uh, right off the, off of uh, by Great Northern Mall there on the other side of uh, um, is that, it's Columbia Columbia Road there or is that Great Great Northern Road? Uh, the the uh, there half the lots full of people that you know have that little number that used to have it. I think they've changed it, but back when we did those surveys, were Lorain County uh, vehicles. So if we get something a little closer where they can join together, and maybe make a link between. You know, a link service between RTA and our park and ride, which is a short run. It, we may be able to get a lot more yardage out of what we're doing. But but your, your question was, is it's very similar to what we're doing, but if they feel it's needed, I guess they feel it's needed. Okay. Mr. Lundy. Hi. Ms. Kowski. Hi. Ms. Sweeta. Hi. Amend Resolution 17242, adopted April 12, 2017, approving the now regional and workforce area number four local plan <coughs> as required under the Workforce Opportunity Innovation Act. Set amendments to reflect administrative and programmatic changes that have taken place as required. So moved. Second. For, just for uh, some information, if you remember a few years ago, the state made a, a huge push to consolidate workforce areas. And in fact, they, they wanted to consolidate them into the economic development areas that they identified throughout the state that um, I think there's about seven or eight of them. I don't recall right up top of my head. Uh, but they wanted to take all within those regions, they wanted to take all of the local WDA boards, local workforce investment boards. <coughs> the uh, I always call everything WDA, but it has a it's more with the wheel or, and consolidate them into one massive board for the region. Well, that may work in some areas. I, I know that uh, I think it's Area 7, um, uh, the Workforce Area 7 uh, is a gerrymandered district that goes way down, and there's, there's probably 10 or 12 smaller communities in that, and it seems to work for them. But with us, being next to Cuyahoga County, uh, we would have lost any kind of existence and any kind of control over what best meets the needs of Lorain County uh, Cuyahoga is, is so large, and the, their problems are unique on the Cuyahoga, and they're somewhat different than the challenges we face here. We did not believe that was going to be in the best interest. And in fact, when it looked like we would not be able to stay independent, we reached out to Medina and Lake County in an effort to possibly merge with, because we felt the flavor of the, the, the issues in their community were more aligned with, with Lorain right. County. Uh, subsequent to the, all of the state's uh, push on that, um, the even they didn't want to give up but the federal government had made it uh, available in the regulations for existing workforce development boards to stay in business if they entered into a consolidated plan for a region so we all worked in northeast ohio on a plan of how to work together 
And, and a silly example is how to have the same form in Lake County for an employer to use to ask for services as you had in Lorain County. Believe it or not, up until that point, you, these companies that were across county lines could encounter six different forms for the same for the same thing. So we were able to get some efficiencies that way, get our uh, a regional plan approved in all the areas and get it approved by the federal government so that we could main in, maintain individual boards to have that local flavor and local concern while still sharing efficiencies where we could uh, for employers to access the system. And this is just an update to that plan. It's been working well, and I still believe it's in the best interest of Lorain County to have a workforce development board looking at Lorain County. Absolutely. Aye. Ms. Kowski. Aye. Aye. Clerk of Courts Common Pleas, amend resolution 1967, adopted February 6, 2019, approving the Pioneer Technology Group Case Management System and contract in the amount of $1,273,130. Amendment is to reflect the approval of the case management system be purchased from Pioneer Technology Group as well as various vendors in the amount of $1,252,778. So moved. Second. Discussion. Mr. Lundy. Aye. Ms. Kowski. Aye. Ms. Sweda. Aye. Engineer approved and entered a contract to Singus Construction LaGrange in the amount of $15,700 for Griggs Road and Clark Road drainage improvement project in Huntington Township. Six bids were received on March 8th, as being the most responsive, complying with specifications. Stormwater District will provide a grant to the township in the amount of $31,600. Remaining balance will be paid from the MVG en engineer account. Issue notice to proceed on before April 1st and complete by June 1st. Authorized administrator to notify the auditor to release retainage and completion of project. So moved. Second. Discussion. Mr. Lundy. Aye. Ms. Kowski. Aye. Ms. Sweda. Aye. Approve and enter in a roadway improvement agreement with K. Hovana Four Seasons at Chestnut Ridge LLC for oversight of construction plans to develop and improve section of the Chestnut Ridge Road at entrance of proposed subdivision within the city of Valeria. Engineer estimates construction to be $262,766.79. Developer shall deposit 13000 for testing and inspection fees and 26000 in construction costs and furnish proof of liability insurance. So move. Second. Discussion. Mr. Lundy. Aye. Ms. Kowski. Aye. Ms. Sweda. Aye. Accept and journalize the 2018 report on bridges. So move. Second. Discussion. Mr. Lundy. Aye. Ms. Kowski. Aye. Ms. Sweda. Aye. Authorize five-year lease purchase with Harrison Ford Wellington and Kansas State Bank in the amount of $190,947.10 for six pickup trucks, two Ford F-350 Crew Cab 4x4, two Ford F-350 Crew Cab 4x2, one Ford F-350 Crew Chassis 4x4, one Ford F-350 Crew Cab 4x4 with dump potty to be paid in the MGBP account. So moved. Second. Discussion. So glad to see it's a local dealership. <coughs> okay. Well, you know, yes. when possible, they do try yeah, very, very they try, hard. But there's state purchasing and everything else that goes on with this. The, and it's a lease purchase, which is nice, not just a lease. Yeah, and, and I will tell you that uh, we have uh, exploited lease purchases mm -hmm. in other areas as much as we can, especially under, under federal grants. Mm -hmm. uh, a lot of times you, the federal grants allow for procurement of vehicles uh, that you can either, you know, mostly you have to lease them because uh, the grant's not long enough to really justify a complete capital purchase. Uh, but what we do is, at the end of the lease, because the vehicles get sometimes get very limited use under those federal lease programs, uh, we buy them out from the county so that we get an upgrade to our, our, our rolling stock at, at about 40 cents on the dollar. Right. Uh, and we get a mostly newer vehicle. So we do work that through the federal grants and do um, uh, make sure that we stay within the guidelines, but that we're producing additional value and leverage for the county. Great. Mr. Lundy? Aye. Ms. Kowski? Aye. Ms. Sweden? Aye. Public comment? Anyone wishing to uh, make public comment to the board? Please. Just give us your full name and where you live and for the record. Do I got to turn this on? Or? No, it's no, on. No, it's on. Okay. This is a first, so I'm kind of nervous, so just bear with me. I'm Lena Arroyo. I'm the fifth ward candidate for Elyria City Council. I live at 247 Massachusetts Avenue, which is in Colonial Oaks. Um, one of the things that I would like to discuss is that vehicle repair program that Job and Family Services has. I did find out that they do that for people that are employed and have children in the home, but that does tend to leave out elderly and disabled people that still have vehicles 
I've talked to a few elderly within my ward that would like to know if they can get included in that program or not because with elderly people they tend to not like strangers coming to their door to pick them up because of society nowadays and they still want to feel independent and that partially takes their independence away from them to be able to stay in their home and you know maintain their own life so they should be included in getting their vehicles fixed as well as like people that have shared parenting they may not have the children in the home and if they are employed they still need to get to work to pay child support for that child so those avenues need to get looked at to include them for the vehicle repair program and another topic is the dog adoption is there is a small business in my ward that is offering to do dog tags for free for pets that get adopted locally instead of being purchased I have flyers for all of you um, and another issue that was brought up to me is if there is any possible way that you guys can start broadcasting on satellite TV, not just cable, because a lot of people cannot afford the current cable rates and they're cutting the cord and going to satellite. And people that live in apartment complexes, and like in my case of Colonial Oaks, you, they, cable companies are contracted out, which means part of your bill goes back to the management company, and management companies do tend to hike up the prices to get more of this and it straps people to dead end saying satellite companies are more popular than cable now so I didn't know if you guys could expand your broadcasting to satellite because they're right now in my trailer park alone it's 75 percent satellite and only maybe 15 percent cable other than people that watch on their phones so that's one reason why Facebook live all the meetings so people can sit on the internet if they have Wi-Fi which is free for some people so just a few things that you should, guys should think about. Thank you. Thank you, Leanne. Thanks. You're welcome. Hey, Jeff. Good morning. You know the drill. <laughs> Pardon? I said you know the drill, right? I do. I'm Jeff Baxter, uh, 160 <laughs> Barnes Road, Elyria, Ohio. And I'm an Elyria City Council at large candidate this year. Um, I wanted to talk a little bit about the Elyria Works program. I'm a pro coach with that program. I do classroom instruction as well. I do individual counseling and intakes. I do anything that's needed for that. And um, I think there's enough room in Lorain County for the Ohio Jobs uh, Works Program and Elyria's uh, uh, Elyria Works now. Um, I don't know that much about the county program, but I can tell you that uh, in Elyria, I think the real impetus for it came from the Elyria businesses. They were looking for more people, and they had casual conversation, I'm sure, with Mayor Brenda, and um, eventually that gestated into what we have today. Um, we are finishing our pilot program right now, um, and I don't know the future of it, but um, I can tell you that having been a part of it, I know that we have worked with um, lots of people and made, I believe, improvements in how they live their lives and, and what they do for a living. And uh, for that, I'm grateful. Um, and I hope that we could all make sure that there's things that, if they can be discussed, communication is key, that uh, there could be some synergies between the two programs if it goes forward. I think that there's um, opportunity for people to, uh, to make improvements in that. The other thing that I think I've noticed in this program is with the individuals is that not everybody gets it the first time around. You know, in, with a, uh, a lot of the people that are in a workforce, a lack of a work situation, they're really stressed. They have a lot of stress in their lives and they, they get confused on how to handle things. Maybe they've made bad decisions in the past that have bitten them in the hind end, so to speak. But um, it's, it's something that they have to do it again and again and maybe again. And for me, I kind of look at it as a, is it maybe kind of an addiction of sorts? I don't know. But I wanted to share those thoughts with you this morning. Thank, Thank you. you. Thanks. Thanks for your participation in that, Jeff. Mm -hmm. Anyone else? Okay. Seeing no further uh, public comment. Thank you, Madam Clerk. It was a very special day, and not just because it's the beginning of spring. <laughs> Although it is, it is nice that it's it's happening, and I'm sure the weather's going to change. And 
we'll all be regretting all the yard work we have to do soon, but right now it's warming up. But I'm really pleased today was our first day at the new 911 facility. Uh, I was uh, out there last night after we left our event. I went over to the new building and we had hands-on out there. We were you know, retesting and finishing up and I was pleased. Um, a lot of our outside uh, help was there. CenturyTel was there. Uh, we're just going through making last minute tweaks and <clears throat> doing our best to have a very seamless uh, transition. I'm very proud of the team there. I'm very proud of not just the managers but the dispatchers. I will tell you they started transferring the calls over at 8 o'clock this morning. Uh, everybody arrived at 7. The calls started going over at 8. Uh, I had to be here to do my duty here, uh, but I, I don't usually have my cell phone with me, but it's sitting here. <laughs> I uh, haven't gotten any calls, which is a very pleasing thing. Um, it's It's been a very, very difficult road with this technology, especially how it aligns with the older systems that are the backbone from other service providers. Uh, but but we're there. Uh, we'll be hard, hard testing that all day. We'll be maintaining staff at both stations uh, until we get a comfort factor and then slowly wean off uh, our old primary. And our old primary will receive some... Uh, facelifting of and not huge but some facelifting and it'll become our, our backup center it's been a long slug taxpayers have been supportive they've supported levies they've supported slight increases in those levies to do this I, I simply can't wait until the weather's warm enough probably sometime in May uh, to start having uh, an open house events to let the public come through in small groups while we operate so it's going to be small groups because we're actually going to be working but I believe they, they have a need to be in there and take a look at what's going on and see see what they've supported these many years. And we'll also tell you that this, this, this summer is, is year 30 uh, since 911 first got a breath of air in Lorain County. Wow. So we're going to try to align sure. those things. Uh, I go back to the Herb Jacoby days. I, <laughs> I, I think Madam Clerk does too when, when Herb was a driving force, uh, rest his soul. Uh, be behind getting a, a 911 system or in county everybody picks up 911 especially the younger generations and th 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 it's been there their whole life mm -hmm. it wasn't there our whole life right. you had the magnets on the refrigerator for the fire department <laughs> the police department yeah, the, right. the e e e EMA yeah. and, and we didn't call it EMA then it was the ambulance service right. and uh, that's when when hospitals still ran ambulances out of, out of the hospitals and, and so forth and, and just to let you know how well Lorain County's done in these areas, only in the last few years has some of the rural communities, especially in Appalachia, even begun to talk about having a 911. They still were in that era of the local call. Um, that's why the state made a push with through their uh, with through service uh, safety services to start making sure that each community had a 911 and to incorporate that. Uh, we've we've come a long way. We used to get. Uh, when they first started, uh, we used to get almost 100% of the calls from landlines. Mm -hmm. Today, we get 85% of our calls from wireless. Mm -hmm. uh, and we've had to upgrade and follow that technology or and or be prepared for the future of that technology for a long time. Uh, I'm hopeful that within the next couple of days that we'll have the uh, text feature up and running. Really couldn't do much with that until we were up and running there. That will allow people to text to 911 and us to text back. If somebody is in a, a dangerous situation and they're texting, the last thing you want to do is try to ring their phone back. Uh, that doesn't really do much, much good. So now we'll be able to take that task, text and, and our dispatchers will be able to text back and, and try to render assistance and, and figure out what's going on that way. Uh, also, the GPS mapping, uh, we'll be able to find somebody in the corner of a building, back of a house. Uh, it won't always be that close, but, but when, it's, when, when we're able to triangulate, we'll be able to get so much closer than where we were before with, with the new equipment. And of course, all of our uh, uh, um, uh, GIS overlays that, that are supporting that have been upgraded. Uh, you were down there, you saw all the, the big boards, with, we, we, we know where all the safety forces are, we know where all the resources are, we got the maps, we got, I love the, the one that's telling us how many phone, how many people are in the queue and how fast we're answering that call. And of course, with the new quality assurance program that we put into place two years ago, we were actually timing that call to a resource and making sure that it gets out there. On average, on average, because some calls are a little bit more uh, difficult than others, but on average, we're, we're, we're less than a minute 
from when the call gets answered, which we try to answer within the first five to seven seconds. Uh, and to give you an idea, that's really one or two rings at best. Mm -hmm. um, and, and then to move that call to where it needs to be and start, start a resource towards that problem while we're still connected with the call and collecting additional data. We can always use improvement, but, but I will tell you that, that uh, when I get emails from uh, folks like today, I got this from Joe Paneski uh, over in Elyria, and you know, uh, Joe has been one of our biggest critics, but one of our biggest fans. I really like Joe. He calls it as it is. Uh, it says, uh, just wanted to wish you, Tracy, the county dispatchers, good luck and congrats as you move into your new home today. As I've said before, you have a top notch. You have top notch leaders in Tracy, Russ, and Mike, and they have been outstanding to work with, and are a true asset to the county and to the citizens of Lorain County. So, uh, we have received others. I just happen to have that one with me. Uh, we've come a long way in, in the last couple of years, and I'm, I'm, I'm hopeful that we're going to continue to evolve. I well, just want to thank you for all the time that you've put into this um, surprise you still have a full head of hair um, <laughs> after it's over with but you know anytime you get into technology and new technology there's always lots of things to work through and you know um, I gotta tell you being a county administrator folks uh, is, is a tough job there's a reason why this guy's still here at seven o'clock at night or eight o'clock at night um, but um, I, I just can't thank you enough because there was a lot of uh, you know, logistical things we had to work through, uh, whether it was with the phone companies or with the technology itself, which a lot of people, you know, uh, don't realize all the work that really went into this. But, uh, yeah, just can't thank you enough. We're glad you're still living and breathing and didn't have a heart attack over this thing. But uh, um, you definitely, uh, definitely got it done, and we appreciate it. Thank we you, Commissioner. I'm we sorry. can handle the call if you get a heart attack, though. <laughs> yes, but I don't know if anybody wants to give me CPR. <laughs> so, well, one I'm thing I'd like to add is... Um, we don't sometimes, we often take for granted uh, the 911 system and how well it works. Mm -hmm. But out in Huron County, just this last summer, they were still navigating through a method of supplying 911 service, how they were going to, to bill for it, whether they were going to use mileage, and some of their response times were in the 20 to 30 minute range. So we are we are really fortunate and i thank you for that work as well thank you the the uh, but it's a team it's a big team uh that includes our it department and smith's people he, he he grunts and snorts and speaks it and i don't understand what he's saying sometimes uh but but we we we've been able to pull it together i'd also like to, to say that that our first responders out there uh, are amazing people in lorraine county I've worked with the police chiefs and the fire chiefs more closely in the last few years, and we've fostered a relationship that, that I would say five years ago we didn't think was possible. It all started with the new world and the leadership of this board and providing the resources and looking past boundaries and, and, and the argument of who was going to get what, who should be paying for what, and what system. It wasn't that long ago that there was three or four different systems mm -hmm. for, uh, for, the, for, for the police, and they weren't, the systems weren't talking to each other. It was chaotic. You know, we've had a lot of initiatives in the last five years, and the taxpayers have supported those initiatives through the 911 levy, and they increased it the last time by a, a 76 to 24 margin, the best results uh, in levies in Lorain County. So we got to continue to provide those services. I have the new initiative with regard to the radios and uh, the mock system and all the problems that they're experiencing radio traffic. I do have that report now from the consultants. It's a little bit amazing, some of the, some of the things in there. Uh, and some of the things that maybe we can participate jointly as a community on mm -hmm. because the ability to do these things individually any, does not exist anymore. Uh, and we knew that with the new, with new world software. We, we have millions in that, but it's working and it's bringing people together and it's bringing all the communities together and all the safety force together to use all of the platforms. So without the leadership of the board, but also without the resources from the community, mm -hmm. from the taxpayers. Very much. It, we wouldn't be able to do this uh, and and so I, I'm just so proud of all of us and 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 the residents of Lorraine County for everything we've done here and the ability to participate so I'm going to close with that and yield to council uh, thank you very much I just want to say Mr. Cortez knows how to build buildings and and renovate things but when it comes to technology that's when you have to rely on other people mm -hmm. so the building's been done for quite a long time it yes. was the technology that had to catch up with the building and you know it was just amazing how we all worked together and we everybody was patient um we got it done 
So I'm very proud of our 911 uh, department, everybody involved in getting it to, to where it is today. So I just want to congratulate you on uh, sticking it out because we had uh, equipment that if it failed, the old equipment, there is no, nothing to replace it. So we got this done in time before something terrible could have happened. So thank God for that. We're, we're a safer community because of it. Mr. Ennis. <coughs> I just have uh, one matter of pending litigation to discuss with you in executive session. Commissioners. Uh, well, Thursday morning, Commissioner Sweet and I attended the State of the City for Wellington's address, and they also did a State of the Schools forum at the same time. Um, it was really interesting that the students in Wellington are, are required to participate in at least one extracurricular activity, and it substantially increases their student academic success. achievement yes yeah. what was the percentage it was a big percent it was huge it's proven that a, a student who is engaged in some form Anything. any form in in his his uh, words were join a club join a group do a sport it 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 um, just significantly enhances and creates a far better outcome of that student and the student is a healthier student for it right yeah, so all those people with the pay to play might want to rethink doing that and making sure that all students are able, regardless of financial ability, to uh, participate in extracurricular activities. Uh, well, after Wellington, I went down to Columbus for the CCAO's General Government and Operations Committee meeting. Um, one of the things that I found out was that for the Board of Elections, we can reduce the amount of poll workers if we use the poll books, which we do, and, and they have multiple precincts at one location, you can reduce the amount of poll workers that we need to do that. So I thought that was pretty interesting. I had not known that. Um, and also, uh, daycare centers are going to have to have a minimum standard. Do you know about this, Mr. Cortez? For job and family services, they have to be rated and they have to have at least one star or they will not be able to get any funding through job and family services. So, and that's gonna happen in 2020. So a lot of these uh, daycare centers <coughs> are gonna have to, you know, make sure that they have certain guidelines that they gotta follow or they're not gonna our, get any funding. Uh, our administrators over job and family services are, are in front of the changes. There's a lot of changes coming down yeah. with regard to that. And also with regard to background checks and the, the, the likes of all of that to BCI. Uh, that's another team you met with um, last week. We met with the management team. Uh, I thought it was a really great meeting. Um, the, the, uh, so uh, while I would say I believe they're in front of that, I'll just check with them anyway just to kind of make sure. Then we had uh, Dan McCarthy, he's the legislative director for Gover Governor DeWine, and he was an Oberlin College ga graduate, mm -hmm. and he looks like he could be related to you guys. Really, you know him? He's a dancing house guy. Do you Very see a nice resemblance guy. between the two of a you a little, little bit? bit. <laughs> 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 I kept looking at him like, man, he looks just like Matt Lundy. <laughs> so let's see what else did I do here. Um, then Friday, I went back down to CCAO for the board of directors meeting. Uh, we had House Representative Jay Edwards from the 94th District to dis state and county partnerships and then later in the day we had uh, Lieutenant Governor John Houston at our meeting to talk about the state budget uh, the CCO asked that the state of um, to be 100% responsible for the indigent attorney fees unfortunately the 90 million dollar ask was dropped down to 60 million which I guess we could be grateful for that they are increasing it but I was hoping for for 100% of that um, $90 million was appropriated for children's services, and I'm not really sure how that affects us since we have a levy in some areas, some uh, counties don't have levy uh, for their children's services. Uh, $8 million to drug task force, which out of 88 counties, I don't think that's gonna go very far. Um, what else we got here? I'm happy to announce that the Ohio Pet Fund has approved a $2,000 grant for our kennel to provide spay and neuter so thank you for whoever uh, put in for that uh, grant I'm sure it must have been our dog warden Tim Pilblad so thank you for that uh, next actually tomorrow starts restaurant week our third restaurant week it's amazing uh, well we should talk about that we should uh, we had first of all we had our member reception yesterday uh, for uh, dialogue and we had how many people would you say attended 
about 65. 65. Well, I thought it went really well. Um, I was, everybody seemed very happy with what we're doing. Uh, we tried to get some ideas of what we could do better. Um, one of the things when we talked about restaurant week and anything that's going on with our businesses in Lorain County is to always say free parking because Cuyahoga County, you don't get that in Cuyahoga County. We, you know, it's a savings. It might be, you know, kind of a small savings, but it's definitely a savings. So um, really happy that uh, we were able to put on a little reception and have some dialogue with our members from Visit Lorain County. Do you want to talk about restaurant week? Well, that and... I don't want to steal the commission it's done, but you all, uh, Matt, L Mr. Commissioner Lundy was ill last night. I was unable to attend. Um, the uh, but we we certainly had a lot of give and take with with the uh, some of the members. A lot a lot of them couldn't be there. They're small entrepreneurs. They they were out running their businesses and you know taking care of the business of business. Uh, it was I liked uh, the few little B two Bs that were going on last last night. It was kind of interesting. Uh, we, some people made it up on some common causes they could work together on mm -hmm. during the discussion portion of our presentation. Uh, the the uh, we did take we did have somebody taking notes during that conversation so we can summarize a few of the issues that maybe uh, we can work on and and bring something back. I would like to maybe have another event. And I say maybe it depends on how things are going in the fall, and then talk about those issues that came up. Uh, you know, generally, I think I only annoyed one person there. That's usually a, that's a record for me. Uh, I, I was a little overwhelmed by the positive comments coming coming out of the group, um, and and the, the lack of really the lack, any lack of criticism because we were open to to uh, what they wanted to say there, and and. Uh, and the people who love our new visitors guide is amazing uh, what they think well he's the one guy from the airport who flies everywhere and sees all kinds of visitors guides said ours is by far the best visitors guides he's ever seen so, for yeah. those who haven't seen it it has a cover of the courthouse at night with yeah. the light shining yeah. on it it's really a beautiful cover yeah. and a good and a solid book full of content and and uh I had to work against our consultant on that. I, I just think we've we've rung the chamois too hard on the lighthouse. Uh, it's 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 always been a feature for the most part, one form or another, on the cover, and and it's a great resource and I, and I love it. And I've been out there for the, the the boat and dines and, but but we need to get a little redirection, a little freshening, and I think our cover should move each year so it doesn't look the same sitting in the rack and uh i do like the the, the, the area maybe a, a small supplement with, with coupons for services in mm -hmm. lorraine county mm -hmm. once again our consultants have been pushing back on that they don't think there's a need for it and i believe there is i use those visits guys where i go and if there happens to be a few coupons for 10 percent off yeah. here or 15 percent off right. there it does get my attention yeah. uh so we're going to continue to evolve uh, and continue to build upon that momentum and and Lorain County is, is starting to you know, get recognized we had reaches from Columbus from the news media unsolicited by us about our Mardi Gras what's going on in Lorain County we use that to capitalize upon restaurant week some of the folks with the hotel you know they're a little concerned that when they're not getting they're not getting heads in beds yeah. uh, from these events and they're a little discouraged but it's but it's really hard to have people come here for different things and and stay here even if they're coming from outside the community uh, and w right now I, I we're not really able to draw from much more than outside the surrounding areas the contiguous areas Matt you were going to say something about that. no I was just going to say I think you know we talk about this all the time is not everybody's going to come in and, and book to stay in a hotel for the night the important thing is they come in the community they look around they have a positive experience and then they think about let's go back next time and make a day of it and stay the night sure and and as we explained we're two and a half years into this we're having our third restaurant week and and things have improved I believe exponentially and they will continue to improve uh, but it takes it takes the members creating the opportunity for us to utilize that to get the word out we can do the advertising we can do the media pieces and that's what we've been doing on their behalf uh, but they got to create the want right. here with what they're doing uh, and and so I, I'm excited I'm hopeful this will be a big restaurant week for us again we and we're looking for something to fill the void after after the wing event and in, in later in the spring we usually have a lull in the summertime but we're gonna work very, very hard 
on our best of Lorraine County again this year, excuse me, to try to bring that number up uh, before we get consumed in the best of the West and we become a footnote in the best of the West. No disrespect, they do a great job in the best of the West. I love it. I actually go out to the Lucena there to it, but I don't want it to be the best of the West and include the eastern side of Lorraine County and it disappears. Uh, so we need, to, we need to continue to evolve the best of Lorraine County uh, through Pulse Magazine, our collaborations with, with Great Lakes Publishing. Uh, with that, please come out to Restaurant Week. You can go to the Business Bureau. Just Google visit, Lorraine Business Bureau. It'll come up. All the information is on the website. I don't need to give you the dot, dot. It'll just come up on the searches. We've improved our position with the search engines on Facebook. We, we pay for a lot of that placement. Uh, the calendar events there. Uh, there's some prizes if you visit a lot of restaurants. Uh, so I have a challenge for the board. Commissioner Kalo has gone, and he's usually the one that eats the most food at these events. Uh, I, you know, During Burger Week, I think he went to nine different places in seven days to eat burgers. Uh, and he usually visits, you know, two, three, four restaurants. So uh, I want to know who's going to get the prize this year for visiting the most facilities. So it's on you uh, uh, to uh, to uh, go back and prove Ted who. Somebody's got to take the throne. Got to take. Got to got to rule. Uh, so uh, it's so competitive. Darn it. <laughs> <laughs> well, if we don't if we don't participate, why should anybody else? Right? Correct. And and so. We, we'll be out there. Please, please uh, um, put it on your social media when you're there. Let people know you've been there. Please share Restaurant Week to any social media or any friends that you do. That's the piece that gets the word out the best. Uh, and and uh, I'm looking forward to making a report to you guys in, in two or three weeks that that uh, that is, you know, exponentially better than what we did each year since yeah. inception. So thank, thank you. So if I could just yourself, you know, like I keep saying it, uh, I said yesterday too, um, the, down in New Orleans, they say even if the tourists don't come, they would still have Mardi Gras because Mardi Gras is a state of mind. So we just have to have that state of mind. Lorraine County is that great place and it's a you know, good place to have fun and eat and dine. And so just, it's a state of mind. You if I can it. add on the B2B um, situation last night and the fact of the hotels and the bed and breakfast, one of the things that evolved in small group conversation was the idea that that perhaps for a, um, a motel versus or a bed and breakfast versus our local eateries and our, our establishments that are, are uh, engaged to get higher foot traffic, that they could, they could go together to put packages together. Mm -hmm. So then they are offering not just a meal but a meal with maybe a show and an overnight stay and that may encourage more business mm -hmm. to those those um, little more difficult mm -hmm. venue operators mm -hmm. that that aren't seeing the immediate uh, of course and, we, and, and we've, we've spoken to them on on several occasions one of the one of the one of the, the uh, missed opportunities last year was when they during the crushers uh, the, uh, the, when they bring the players here where they stay because they have to you know, and and the, the hotels that were used were in Cuyahoga County because right. they couldn't get the rates. Right. And Commissioner Lenny, you've you've talked about that yeah, because the 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 host team has to provide the hotels. So, but uh, they had reached out to to local hotels. They weren't able to get the pricing that was competitive uh, for the teams to stay. So, unfortunately, the teams are staying in Westlake. in Cuyahoga Westlake. County. And we ran in the same thing with the the MAC conference. Uh, which is a great series if you get a chance to go there you'll see some of the future um, major league stars and I'm trying to think of the uh, Lauer is the last name the midview pitcher who now pitches for the San Diego Padres I think he was with uh, Kent State at the time but saw him pitch in that that uh, conference uh, championship series um, so it's really it's really good level of baseball the problem was that uh, arrangements had been made already with the MAC conference to have people do the packaging as you said uh, at hotels in Cuyahoga near the airport which made no sense because the ballparks in Avon you would think you'd want to go the games be able to run your hotel room freshen up come back for the later game whatever it may be instead of having to drive all the way back to your hotel or you know just stick it out for the whole day so uh, those are some things we've been working on behind the scenes but uh, we realize the importance trying to get people into the beds that's where the bed tax comes from to support uh, visit Lorraine County and, and the discouraging thing is our bed tax is significantly lower mm -hmm. it is. in most in most areas not all than it is in Cuyahoga County 
Uh, but we'll continue to address those issues as, as we go down the road. Uh, but but you know, we were able to share that with folks last night. I, I think they were satisfied that we were aware of the problems and working on them. And the, and the biggest issue of the night was the AB&Bs that are not paying bed taxes yeah, yeah. And, yes. and where we're going with that. As I explained, we've, you know, Jerry sent them the hostile, intimidating prosecutor's letter uh, about uh, having to pay. Yeah. <laughs> and we mailed out a lot of those letters yeah. to everybody we could identify that's got a listing. Uh, but the kind enforcement. Of the honor system. Well, a lot of it's on the honor system. The, the, uh, even, even the hotels are on the honor system. They forward their bed tax to us. Mm -hmm. There's not a big auditing component, but they're they're bigger and they can be audited, and so they usually follow suit. There's been times when we've missed checks and we had to go back and remind them they haven't paid their bed tax. Uh, but with the A, B, and Bs, it's really hard. As you know, I thought they people understood. We can't sit in the bushes and observe who's going into an A, B, and B and see we got the bed tax on that. Uh, we'll try again, but there is a, a big siphoning of resources from the hotels. It's not just about us getting our three percent bed tax; it's it's about the hotels not filling the beds and their vacancy rates being much higher, while the A, B, and Bs are, are not paying anything into the community. Uh, and the folks that are getting hit the hardest, though, uh, are the are the B and Bs. Uh, the the A, B, and Bs are giving them a really really mm -hmm. bad run for their money. Uh, with regard to the, being able to uh, get at least a responsible vacancy rate that keeps their business viable. It, it's a problem that still needs further addressing. I don't know what the solution is, mm -hmm. but, but, but it, it, we'll have to put some attention to it and see if we can't at least get a better uh, environment so that, that everybody's on a level playing field. Yeah, and I know that you know sometimes people refer to it as too much government oversight, but you know these um, every. I've always said I just want parity. I just want everybody to play by the same rules. You know, it's not fair to a reputable business who plays by the rules every single day to have to compete against somebody who doesn't play by the rules. You know, and uh, you know that's that's what the requirement is. You got to charge the bed tax, and um, you can't just kind of brush it off. So, it was interesting. One of the um, bed and breakfast folks shared that while the Airbnbs are a problem. They also, there would be a regulation issue because they typically will attempt to um, uh, go bypass the Airbnb fee as well. They will make their arrangement outside the Airbnb booking system. Right. So they're not just dodging the tax, they're, they're dodging the fee. Yeah. Right. Oh boy. All right, last thing on my report, uh, the county commissioners are partnering with Second Harvest Food Bank to do a food drive. Um, We'll have some bins here in uh, some of our departments, but we're also going to collect at the collection center, uh, which is at 540 South Abbey Road in Elyria. Um, they are open on Monday from 12 to 4, Wednesday from 12 to 6, and Saturday from 9 to 3. So breakfast items, canned vegetables, canned chicken, boxed rice, peanut butter, coffee, tea, things like that, anything that uh, you'd like to donate would be very much appreciated. You were the uh, past chair? I am the past chair. Uh, President Marsha Ballinger is the new chair. So. And you're Meritage this year, right? So you, you go to all the stuff? I do. I go to all the <laughs> alumni. I'm an alumni forever now. So. We're, we're, they are a valued resource that, are. That, that actually dwells in the background in Lorain County. Yeah. Uh, they're out there on Baumhart Road in an area that doesn't really get a lot of traffic anymore. Uh, they got a great facility, great people, and the people that support them, the, the community mm -hmm. folks that come out are just amazing yeah. for what work they do. Because and, they're a well-oiled machine. And, they and are. And there's, there's more than too many people food challenged in Lorain County. Yeah. Uh, and the, the amount of people that are getting SNAP assistance to fill the gap is huge, uh, but there are people that do not get SNAP that are still food challenged, and we have a lot of youth that are not certain where meals are coming from mm -hmm. on a regular basis. We, we talk about the, the drug academic, the opiate problem. We, those are things you more visibly see. But, but the hunger problem, especially in the colder months in Lorain County, okay. is significant. <coughs> uh, and there's, there's places that are addressing it. I, I think, Jeff, you work at the one at, at St. Mary's, Mary's here over here. Mm -hmm. I see the folks out there in line all the time. Thank you for what you do there. 
There's other ones. There's a big one at the college. Yeah. We have students on the campus that, that they're trying to improve their life. They're trying to get to a level of, of self-sufficiency in the community through education and, you know, and then on to a job. And they, can't, they can't feed themselves. Right. So uh, it's, it's the problem that nobody really talks about enough, uh, but these folks are making a difference. They are, yeah. And you could also do cash donations. And all the food and the donations uh, that you give stay here locally to, for your friends and family neighbors. That was a long report. Sorry, I'm turning, yeah, into, turning into Matt Lundy. Yeah, I was going to say. <laughs> I knew that was coming. Well, I'm, doing, I'm determined to give the shortest report today. So, um, just thank you very much. <laughs> thank you very much. Yeah, right. Um, I had the opportunity to attend the Lorain County Public Health Board uh, meeting, the annual meeting, and I know about a year ago everybody was talking about all all these communities merging, uh, Lorain, Elyria, Avon Lake, so on and so forth, and. Things have gone just smoothly. I remember when that was being discussed, I said, you know, Dave Koval and his team, they run a good operation over there. I think you guys will be pleased. And a year later, I think you could hear uh, crickets in the room. You know, there were no complaints, uh, no tension compared to more than a year ago when uh, all this was being looked at. So congratulations to the Board of Health, all the communities, everybody working well together, and for Dave Koval and his leadership. Uh, congratulations, Jack Kilroy, with the Sober 17th, which took place on uh, Sunday, actually on St. Patty's Day over there in Avon Lake. Uh, I got there right around uh, 5 o'clock, and uh, they sold their last tickets. So it was a complete sellout. Um, so I just wrote them a contribution and then, uh, then left. Um, but uh, nonetheless, uh, they had a packed house there, and obviously they got to comply with fire codes, so they can't just <laughs> let everybody come in. But uh, but always a great event, and uh, just want to thank uh, Jack for all that he uh, he does on that. Um, we were talking about workforce development earlier. Just can't encourage people enough to get into the Ohio Means Jobs system. It is well worth making the trip over there. I run into so many people who talk about being being uh, underemployed and looking for new opportunities, well, the best way to try to find a new opportunity is to have your skill set actually matched up with new opportunities that are out there. And, uh, but the first thing you got to do is you got to get into the um, Ohio Means job system. Um, Leanne, on your point about satellite TV, I think the issue we run into is technology. Um, with cable operations, when the, a lot of those uh, franchise agreements were made, because I know I worked on the one in Avon Lake, they had what they called the, the PEG channels, the public education government uh, channels that were set up. You know, those are actually designated channels. I don't believe that the satellite folks have those set up in any way like that. Direct but TV has one. Direct TV has one. That's what we switched it. Oh, okay. Okay. Yeah, so there may be a technology gap there, but we can certainly find out there's a way to fill that. And then also, um, I know Sunshine Week uh, was held recently. Sunshine Week is a week uh, where the emphasis is on uh, journalism and, and the public becoming more aware of what's going on and, and the hard work that journalists do each and every day. I'm a big believer in freedom of the press and uh, First Amendment and, uh, and uh, uh, journalists, I believe, do, do a very good job in this country. Um, but I would encourage journalists to, to really look at uh, Jobs Ohio. I'm kind of baffled how now all of a sudden, uh, when I was in Columbus, I was designated as the big troublemaker with Jobs Ohio because I kept calling for greater accountability, being able to audit their books, and greater transparency. Uh, the way they operate, they receive hundreds of millions of dollars from the liquor taxes in Ohio. Um, their only requirement is to produce a yearly annual report. They get to determine what goes into that yearly annual report. Uh, obviously, if you're putting together a yearly annual report, you talk about your hits. You don't really talk about your misses. Uh, as far as being required to meet public records laws, they can hide in the shadows like you have never seen an organization hide in the shadows because they're not held to the same standards. I just find it so interesting now that Governor Kasich has left, even seeing a lot of my former colleagues who were big proponents of Jobs Ohio now all of a sudden want it to be more transparent. Um, you should look at the payroll. Payroll will just blow you away. People in the community would be extremely aggravated if you saw how so many members of that payroll are making more than $200,000 a year. That payroll is out of sight. They don't have to comply with ethics standards. In other words, I could be sitting on the Jobs Ohio board 
make a loan to you through the state or some grant through the state through Jobs Ohio, and the very next day I could go and work for you because there's no ethics standards in place. Uh, it's, it's, it's really, it, it's a disgrace is what it is. And uh, so I would just encourage local media and the, and the general public, please Google Jobs Ohio. Uh, you'll probably find me in a lot of those articles. But um, uh, it's just not a good thing for Ohio. It's certainly not uh, transparent. It's certainly not accountable. There needs to be greater accountability. I'm all in favor of economic development. Don't have a problem with that. But uh, they even did one of those politifacts. Remember the politifacts where they have the meter, whether it's false or whether it's true. And mine pinged all the way true when I said that um, the way that the current laws are already put in place, the Ohio Revised Code in Ohio, there's all kinds of protections to make sure that if you're a business applying uh, for loans or grants through the state that your personal financials are not exposed to the public or your business plan. Um, but uh, Jobs Ohio is just hides in the, in the shadows. It's one of the most secret government, quasi-government organizations that you're ever going to encounter. Uh, look it up, research it, and certainly tell the legislators that you approve greater transparency and accountability. The auditor himself could not audit their books. It's the craziest thing in the world. They come around here and audit our books all the time. So uh, look it up. It's, uh, you'll find it very interesting. I think you'll be quite angry and aggravated after you learn more. But uh, if they're saying that they finally want to get on board and change, uh, I guess I wasn't a troublemaker after all. That completes my report. Okay, so last Thursday after uh, the State of the City in Wellington when Commissioner Kokoski headed to Columbus, I headed over to the North Coast Mayor's Luncheon, which was held at Tom's Country Place in Avon. Mayors Jensen, Hunter, Bring, and Zilka uh, get together. They share uh, interesting information and update on the growth on the eastern portion of our county as well as the efforts of collaboration that they've shared in. And a lot of very um, exciting things are still happening over there amidst all their growth. But probably the big standout from that event was uh, that Mayor Jensen had the Avon High School kids put together a video. And he was a very tough act to follow. <laughs> uh, they did a uh, quasi news report, somewhat Saturday Night Live style. Oh, yeah and it was on video, it was very well done. So that was a, a great, um, great effort on the parts of the uh, students who participated and they were there to attend. On Friday I was able to the, attend the uh, 2019 Lorain County Urban League Diversity Inclusion Program. Uh, it was an excellent program and very well attended. Good speakers were there and um, great information was shared. Friday evening, I was able to support the Clearview Education uh, Steak Fry over at the Antlers in Lorraine. Again, the food there is excellent. If, if you have an opportunity to do a function in Lorraine, Antlers with the Spectrum Group is doing a really nice job. On Monday, I, there was a ribbon cutting for Ohio Business College, their HVAC uh, facility over on Pearl. A uh, representative from Mayor Rittner's office was there, and I attended, and, and they had uh, individuals with different um, HVAC companies as well in attendance, and it's a nice facility, very nicely done. Uh, one of the things, since we are amidst the merge of the Addis and the Mental Health Board, it seems as though we're hearing from more and more individuals, organizations, and uh, folks who are in support of what we're doing felt it was long overdue. One of the things I found interesting, we received the Recovery Ohio Advisory Council report from uh, Governor Mike DeWine this week. And one of the things he references right away is far too many Ohioans have died, too many continue to struggle with mental health and substance use disorders. Everything he references within his uh, um, advisory initial report uh, ties the two together, and it, it just shows that, that we are, are essentially on the right path with this, and I'm optimistic to see that we will have greater, greater results as a result of that effort. And finally, my last mention is PACE Foundation. 
in conjunction with the Louise R. Johnson, Johnson Foundation, both nonprofit organizations are hosting their fourth annual prom dress giveaway on April 6th, and that's going to be over at the Greater Victory Christian Ministries Church on Reed Avenue. And what they are, both organizations are created to empower and mentor youth and help students at, uh, attend college, but this event makes prom more affordable for young women who may have the desire to attend their high school prom but couldn't afford to. And what they're se seeking is in-kind donations, donations of gently used formal dresses, which in most cases that means one wearing, <laughs> uh, formal shoes, accessories, and the donations will, uh, the proceeds, any gift cards, any donation at all goes directly to those students and they need those donations by April 1st. So a good, good um, feel good um, organization and effort to support. And that concludes my report. So tomorrow we'll have our last meeting at 10 a.m. for correspondence. I uh, would move that the uh, reading be waived. Second. Discussion. Mr. London. Aye. Ms. Kowski. Aye. Ms. Sweeta. Aye. Okay. Um, well, at this point, uh, I would move that we go into executive session uh, for the reasons stated by the county administrator and the assistant county prosecutor. Second. Mr. London. Aye. Ms. Kowski. Aye. Ms. Sweeta. Aye. This has been a broadcast of the recent Lorraine County Commissioner's General Meeting. Unless otherwise announced, meetings are held Wednesday morning at 9.30 at the Administration Building, 226 Middle Avenue, 4th Floor, Downtown Elyria. These are public meetings and you are invited to attend. Agendas are posted prior to the meeting at www.lorraincounty.us. Click on Departments to see the Commissioner's page. Then click on View Agenda for a printable copy of the agenda.